Hey guys, Dante here back with another little video. And in this one, I'll be doing another follow up to my leak starter, which was a Hex Blast uh, Elementalist. And now we transitioned into a Hex Blast Ignite Occultist. Now, the biggest difference between Elementalist and Occultist is um, the ascendancy, obviously. And for Elementalist, you got a wee easy way to get Ignite, which is Shaper of Flames. All damage can Ignite. Your hits always Ignite. Now, when you swap over to Occultist, you don't get that necessarily. You need to compensate for the chance to Ignite by respecting a little bit of the tree and making sure your Hex Blast is 100% chance to Ignite. As you can see here, Hex Blast, Offense, and chance to Ignite is 105% in my case, which I'm overcapping by a little bit, but not too much. Now, I'll have, in the, I'll have the POB in the description as always, and the things that I want to talk about as to what generally changed, as you can see, the tree changed quite a little bit. Uh, I unspecced out of all the exposure nodes because we're not inflicting exposure anymore because our ignite damage is chaos damage. So uh, all the exposure masteries are gone. I just took the elemental damage because elemental damage still scales, fire damage still scales. So that's where we're at right now and um yeah uh again make sure the most important thing that your hex blast is 100 percent chance to ignite otherwise the bill will feel like trash because you'll be popping hex blast and you wouldn't know why yo what's up why is it not doing damage also uh when swapping to occultist we got a additional curse and we also can apply curses to hexproof enemies, which is, uh, where is it, this one? Ah, yeah, whatever. But we can apply curses to hexproof enemies. Uh, yeah, your hexes uh, can affect hexproof enemies. So basically, you don't have to worry about enemies are hexproof or something like that. You just, if you roll the map mod with enemies are hexproof, it's like inexistent. It doesn't matter for you. Uh, and uh, we took Profane Bloom, Malediction for Additional Curse, and we spec into Withering Presence. We get a bunch of Chaos Damage, a bunch of Chaos Res. As you can see, my Chaos Res is capped. I'm 75 and everything, which is amazing. And uh, yeah, it's really, really good. Uh, also, as you can see, my chance to block is uh, 65, and when I pop my roomies, it's 75 and 41. Good. So, now that we got that out of the way, most important thing... Ignite chance 100% on your Hex Blast. And uh, yeah, about the gear, nothing really much has changed except I ditched Wind Shriek and I got a rare pair of boots. Um, so when you swap out of Wind Shriek, you lose an additional curse, so you need to make up for that. And to do that, we, well, I actually got a chest piece with, you can apply additional curse, which is Hunter based. Uh, I haven't really paid much attention to uh, whatchamacallit, the new influence influences because they don't really affect the build that much. Sure, it's good, like effect of non-curse auras and stuff like that is really good, but uh, they really want additional curse because even though our ignite is chaos damage, flammability still provides a good DPS increase. Um, and uh, yeah, what else? Uh, the belt. Um, Easy way to craft this belt is to get a Stygian that you're happy with, resists life and stuff like that. And just slam a Warlord Orb with fire damage because Warlord's Exalted Orb are very cheap. I believe they are under one Exalt. And um, it's like a 50-50. You either get the fire damage or you get increased damage or armor or something like that. But I got T2 on the first try. So, about the amulet. I've been getting a lot of questions about the amulet. If Ashes of the Stars is better than a crafted um, amulet, which mine has plus 10 max doom, you get I get life res and damage over time multiplier, which is a really, really lucky roll, I could say. I got T2 damage over time multi on the first essence that I used. And the short answer is that the amulet can be better uh, if it's perfectly rolled. Again, as you can see here, with the amulet, the rare amulet, we are at 50 doom because we get the 10 additional doom from the essence craft, right? Now, if we roll the amulet, this has to be perfectly rolled and anointed with searing heat to be better. This has to be like 30% quality and 20% reservation efficiency uh, to actually be 
good, right? Because when you get the 30% uh, quality of all gems, it 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 moves light ahead, right? So you get this, it's your 23 million, and uh, your Doom goes to 40, obviously, which POB automatic calculates, but you're still at 23 million. So if you have the perfectly rolled amulet, then yes, you can use it. Uh, you will lose some life, you will lose some resistances, you will lose some damage over time multi, but in the long run, it does seem to be better. Um, and I'm not sure if it's cheaper or more expensive, that's up to you if you want to buy it and anoint it and stuff like that. So this is going to be up to you if you want to pursue this or a rare helm or rare amulet, okay? If I do this and then... POB doesn't calculate 50 doom, then we're back at 22 million, and like again, we're just gonna redo the same thing. We're gonna swap the amulet to Ashes of the Stars, 23 million, with 40 doom. So, I guess the amulet is a bit better, um, if it's perfectly rolled, and you get a little bit of more uh, wiggle room with your mana, for example, mine is not perfectly rolled, but you do get a little bit of wiggle room. And you're going to have to compensate for the decks, which is kind of annoying a little bit. But then again, this is all up to you. Now, uh, I did go for a uh, one button build, which means that I'm using, what is it? Awaken Blasphemy linked to Temporal Chains and uh, Portal for like, because I didn't have anything to put there. So let me show you a map showcase. We're going to do a Hunter map. We're going to just do it with Maven. And I'll show you what has changed in the gameplay. Now, keep in mind, I'm still using my rare amulet. I might swap the rare one to the unique one, Ashes of the Stars, at a certain point when I feel like I fixed all the decks, the attributes, stuff like that. Now, as you can see, we are a one button build while mapping, very important. On bosses, you still want to use your curses. Mana is proving uh, a little bit of an issue, uh, but hopefully with the amulet, once I fix everything, it's going to be just fine. Now, I did kill all the bosses except Uber Elder because for the past three days I've been trying to do the um, Innocent Touch recipe and it's proving quite a pain in the butt, and I do not recommend it to anybody to try and do that recipe, it is probably not worth all the time and hassle of farming all the materials that you need. But yeah, that's what I've been doing the past three days, trying to farm that. I've been doing it for the challenge mostly. So, yeah, as you can see, it's a one button playstyle right now. The only time I cast curses is when there's a, a really tanky mob and obviously on bosses, map bosses, act bo uh, like end game bosses, stuff like that. It just makes everything feel better, faster. So, uh, it's still, it's very smooth, very smooth gameplay. Profane Bloom helps. I'm still using a Pyre since apparently there's no rare ring that can replace Pyre. Pyre is just too good. I didn't get my um, unwavering uh, unwavering stance, something like that. A small jewel, so I don't have power charges yet. But I do want to get two more levels and spec into that as well. And maybe we will have it by the next video. I'm just gonna skip Cassia right now, so I'm gonna come back. So I don't want to take make this video too long. Okay, we're at the boss. Uh, so I said like a problem with the mana, I just ditched Defiance banner to have a little bit more mana so I can proc all my curses. I do this. Mana. X Blast. And pretty much you can kill him with one Ignite and just move along. Uh, have a portal. If I can. There we go. And I'll lose the El Hizman. This is going to be witnessed. For a single target, you want to put your Wither Totems. Okay, curse the boss. X Blast. Curse him again. X Blast. Stuff like that. Very simple. 
Nothing really changed in the rotation. Except we don't use Wave of Conviction anymore. As you can see, it is very smooth. And that was it. And that was with decent mods as well. So yeah. Uh, I did kill Cyrus a couple of times. I did kill uh, Maven. I killed everybody. I'm going to leave some boss showcases at the end of the video. So... Yeah, for now, that would be it. That's actually a nice shield. T2% life. Res? Efficiency? That's not bad. Okay. Uh, what else did I want to touch about? Mm, the tree didn't change a lot. Like I said, I, I respect this to get uh, Ignite Chance. So, yeah. I'm going to leave the POB in the description. Make like The main thing that I want to put extra attention on is... Um, make sure your Hex Blast is 100% chance to ignite, okay? And then you do your, you, when you replace your boots, get an additional cursed chest piece. So you can still use punishment and flammability. You can ditch Ellie Weakness because Ellie Weakness will not give you that much of a added bonus. And use Waken Blast for me with Temp Chains. And uh, you will self cast Despair. Which I have here somewhere. What is it? Uh, Arcane Surge, Despair, and Impending Doom. So I get an Arcane Surge every time I cast this. So you can use with increased air area of effect or something like that. I'm still using a Martyr. For the helmet, I'm using a Blizzard Crown because the flat added cold damage is really, really good. Life resistances. And uh, yeah, I also included an endgame helmet here. It is basically what I have, but the mods that you want are nearby enemies have minus 9 chaos res, and you ideally want the ignites, you inflict the damage faster from the redeemer mod and chance to ignite. Chaffing a 15% chance to ignite again will help you in the passive tree, like respecting a little bit, ditching some chance to ignites. You would probably be able to ditch this and get fire damage over time multi, which would be way, way, way better. Uh, you could maybe spec out of this like 15% chance and get like fire damage all time multi again But that is all up to you and to your budget Okay, same uh, configuration 15 wither stats because we're not using um, uh, What you call it a wave of conviction to apply exposure hex 40 if you are using uh, the rare at the unique amulet as I am still using this it's gonna be like this so yeah that will be it for the video for now i hope you guys enjoyed it uh, i'm gonna have a pob discord and uh, my twitch link in the description i stream almost every day on twitch.tv forward slash dante00151 feel free to drop by say hi join the discord if you got any questions and until next time as always take care and stay safe oh. Clean, dude. My darling champion, you were fantastic. No loot, pog, amazing. Gaming, goddamn it, I have twenty percent XP. Okay, Al Hesman, uh, Vertania. Okay, okay, and rocks, and Baron. Okay, who do I focus first? Probably Baron and Vertania. Bran and Vertania, probably. Okay, let's see who do we get. Bran and Vertania, obviously. Great. Okay. Yeah, that's Rippy. That's Rippy. Wow, that's Rippy. Wow, that's rippy, dude. But I almost got Britannia. Was it element avoidance? No, it's a chance to cause ailments. Which is not that bad. Time to 
Okay, I think I got Veritania down. Suction. I need more mana. Okay, now I gotta get Baron down. Okay, I think Baron is down. Okay, now he should be down. Just die, dude. Okay, there we go. He's dead. Okay, easy. Easy mode incoming right now. Except I don't have mana. There we go. Never mind, we got mana. It's fine. Yeah, we got a lot of banners, so let's kill those off. Okay, that wasn't I want that you bad. all to that know that bad. we are fighting the fake news. It's fake, phony, fake. If I actually get a chance to attack him, then I actually do damage, but since he's permanently on the move, it's rather annoying. There we go. I don't know.